Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm really excited today. I'm always excited, right? Um, but today I'm going to talk about blouses, 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 and more blouses. Um, I love blouses. I plan on having another video about my favorite blouse patterns. But for today, I'm just going to show you some blouses that I've been making. Um, really, it's just garments I've been making, but they all happen to be blouses. And I did not plan that. But when I set them all down, I was like, oh. <laughs> I think I have a blouse problem. Anyway, before we get into it, um, if you like videos like this or you like fabric hauls, what I plan on making, how I organize my sewing room, all these kind of things, go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below, the notifica notification bell if you want to hear me talk like really well notification bell to be notified when I have another video and without further ado let's get started all right the first blouse is not on a hanger because I wore it today and I plan on hand washing it so this is some striped silk from the fabric store and it is a beautiful blue stripe and I made the Hedwich blouse by Republic de Chiffon. Beautiful blouse. I will talk more about blouses in another video but it is a great blouse pattern. It's got some gathering in the back um, and funny story I ran out of fabric and so I had to cut one of the fronts going with horizontal stripes and the other front with vertical stripes so it was actually a really happy accident and I was very excited about it when I realized that's what I had to do the fabric actually uh, the grain line actually does go up and down this way on with horizontal stripes and so all of the vertical stripe pieces that I have cut are um, on the cross grain but it hangs really well I haven't had any issues with anything yet um, and I cut it exactly on the cross grain so it should not stretch or warp too much this I decided to kind of change it up and do the horizontal even though the vertical is right next to it and then I played with stripes again when I did the vertical sleeve but then I did the horizontal um, cuff and so I kind of thought about it everywhere I also did vertical on the back but then I did horizontal on the yoke here so um, I had a lot of fun with this top and it's so gorgeous on and the silk is just so beautiful oh, I love it so much um I also had a lot of fun with the buttons I couldn't decide what button I wanted and I did not have enough I only had let's see there are um one two three four five six buttons in the front I only had six of this kind of button from Arrow Mountain um, and it's basically a really cool like star shaped button that you can embroider on so I actually use embroidery thread and I put it through the little holes that are in like a star shape all the way around um, and I really enjoyed that it was such a cool detail to add to my shirt with the advice of a friend I actually sewed all the buttons on and they weren't sitting properly and I figured out with the advice of someone I know and trust that it was because I didn't leave a section that would stick out and I, the, the word for that is completely leaving my brain but it's what you can do on coats where you just kind of separate the button away from the fabric just a little bit so it can have a good shake there's the word shake so I left like a little shank by wrapping the, um, I kind of, anytime I went through the side of one of these, I kind of came back through the fabric in the center. And then I also wrapped the, the um, thread around a few times. Um, so it kind of created a shank that separated it out and it made it lay in the buttonhole a lot better because before it was like pushing the buttonhole out because these little side pieces are so far 
to the side that it was like making the buttonhole like be open if that makes sense and so I changed that I re-sewed on all the buttons another thing that I it's not beautiful but I did fix it the button there's so much interfacing here the buttonhole was not big enough um, it was not stretching enough and opening enough for the button so I had to add like extend it and cut it a little bit further so I did fix that as well um the collar on this pattern has um you put interfacing on both the under and out outer collar um and i don't really like that because it doesn't feel like it's relaxed enough even though i use like pretty relaxed interfacing i didn't use very stiff interfacing anyways but it's fine it turned out okay um with the collar and it sits well on me so it's really not a catastrophe but i think i would have preferred it to be a little bit less stiff but other than that that is what favorite new tops that I made um the cuffs are really pretty I use different buttons um but they're still wooden so they they match okay um it's not a big deal to me that they're slightly different they're still really pretty and I can button it up nicely with this little cup or I can roll it up which I did today when I wore it anyways so that's the first one that required a lot of uh talking but we're gonna move on to the next one this is a blouse that I've talked about in another video before and I've also talked about this fabric before it's from pretty mercury um, in France and this is actually their pattern as well um, this pattern was so lovely a lot of French patterns I find have a lot of seams that are either French seams or they're hidden and so they really do a good job of like burying their seams and not having a lot of exposed serge seams and I really really like that I feel like that's a, such a cool detail and so this pattern was really good for that the only problem I had with this pattern oh it's very gathered in the back too which is really pretty the only problem I had with this was that um, the buttons, it was so hard to get them to sit well and not, they're a little bit better when I wear it, but um, it was very hard to s get them to sit in the right spot because there's not like destined, the buttons holes are very clear where you need to put them, but where to put the actual buttons so that, you know, where to make them meet. Um, it's a little bit confusing and I didn't really love like trying to figure that out like I probably re-sewed them on like three or four times to, to where it would sit okay and what I mean by that is like I have like I couldn't just leave it like barely like the, this one's over here well then then this button needs to be over here because this whole thing is slanted so it's like you had to like place the buttons like further to the left as this crosses over and so there's supposed to be a button there, button there, button there. There's supposed to be two buttons here, which I did. But since this was crossing, <clears throat> hold on. Since this was crossing over so much, I actually felt like this piece right here, I'm going to have to show you this, was like flapping out. Does that make sense? It was crossing over so much that there was like a huge flap here. So I added another buttonhole and I put a button on the inside and voila, now it stays in place and I love it. So it's a really cute blouse on. I tuck most of my blouses in and this one is not, it's great, you can tuck it in, but it's really meant to be out because it has this little like bottom uh, band here. It's not tight or anything, it's just a cute little addition that it really does better to be out. So. But I really like it, um, even though I had a little struggle. Um, I really like how it turned out. And that is that one. Next is something I kind of hacked up a little bit. It is a blouse I've definitely made before. It's Simplicity 8839. Um, I got this Polly from Joann's and um, I wanted to make something really light and airy with it. Um, polyester doesn't breathe quite as well as to me as cotton and other things. So I didn't really want to dress, but I really liked how cute it was for this top. So this top, this particular view with the short sleeves is supposed to have a neckline that's up here. That's just like a, a regular, um, round neckline. Um, but I decided I wanted the V with the V-neck and then I put, which all the sleeves 
for those are interchangeable because all the views the sleeves and the armholes are interchangeable usually so i just popped the short sleeve on to this bodice and i love how it looks it looks so good um the interfacing the interfaced facing right here at the point was trying to pop out a lot and so what i did is i just did a few like invisible stitches right there just to kind of keep it from going down and then i put a tag right here um and um attached it to the back so um that stays down as well so anyway i love it so much and i've actually worn it in another video and i've also worn the stripe on another video <laughs> All right, this top is something I'm really excited about. I used the Stitch Sisters um, sleeve hacking video um, to make these giant sleeves. So this is the Emmy top by Seamwork, and it's very similar to the Roscoe blouse by True Bias, but it's just kind of like a peasant top. Um, and I, the sleeves were just kind of regular on that top, not super tight, but not like a poof sleeve. And I wanted a giant sleeve at the top and like all the way down. So you, if you do that, you need to expand the part that attaches to the armhole and like the entire sleeve, it just spreads out like this. Um, I won't give them away too much because that is what I learned on their video, which you can go purchase. Um, the, none of this is sponsored, but I just love them. Um, but I love how this leaf turned out because it's so huge. And you should see my pattern piece. It's literally, it was as wide as the fabric folded in half. Like it was like 27 inches wide. I mean, it was like really huge. Um, and it turned out really well. It's kind of hard to see because it's on the hanger, but if you can see, oh gosh, black is so hard um, to visualize, but there's a lot of gathering here and in the back and the sleeve itself is really wide and poofy and beautiful. And I have elastic down here, but it's not really supposed to like like cinch in it's supposed to just kind of be relaxed on your arm so that's how this is um and it has like this elastic up here you have an option for it like a tie or something that hangs on but i didn't do that um but i have the elastic up here which was really easy to insert and i also have instead of hook and eyes hook and eyes and i <laughs> hook and eyes and i i'm such a nerd y'all we do not get along because I hate sewing them in. Hate's a strong word. I don't like sewing them in. They never sit right. Like it takes forever to put them in. I don't want to see the silver or black or whatever I use to put them in. I don't want to see it behind there. Um, so what I decided to do was put buttons on and what I did is I used Erica Bunker's video to make a thread chain. It's a wonderful YouTube video. You need to go and watch it. Thread chains are so easy. They take like no time at all and they're like really fun to make. Um, so I made thread chains and I used those as loops to put, um, to, to grab these three little pearl buttons here. And by the way, forgot to talk about this wonderful fabric. It's Atelier Burnett. Um, I don't know if it's double gauze. It's just like, a, um, it's not double gauze. I'll have to find out what it is. I will put it down below. But anyways, and the top is just so beautiful. I'm not really a fan of black fabric or wearing black but the little suns are just so pretty. It's a little bit see-through, but not enough to where I have to wear something underneath. Um, and I love this little detail that I added and the big sleeves and I love the length. It's a little bit cropped, so gorgeous. Very happy with this hack. I'm very happy with this pattern. Last but not least, I am wearing some new shorts that I made, the Pietra shorts by Closet, um, 
core patterns. They're called closet core patterns now. Beautiful pockets. Um, this is white or kind of like a little bit of an off-white tinsel twill. Has nice top stitching. So I know what you're thinking. White tinsel twill in shorts. Hmm. Yes, it was very see-through. And I knew this before I even embarked on this project, but I really wanted white shorts and I wanted white tinsel twill shorts because they're so soft and I don't really like wearing shorts in the summer or the spring or even the fall where I live. Um, because they like, I don't like wearing like denim shorts because they like just bunch up and they like just bug me and the sweat accumulates there and it's just like, oh, I don't like it. I don't like it. So. I made these and they're so soft, they move with my body, they bend really well, they have like a flat front and they, you know, have the elastic in the back and they actually fit me pretty well, room to stretch when I have go to a barbecue or something like that. Um, and um, I don't know about y'all, but I need some stretching room when I'm eating, just saying. Um, but yeah, they, they are just wonderful. So how did I get away with see-through fabric? I underlined it, meaning all I did was I took every single pattern piece and I cut out an exact duplicate of that piece in a cream colored linen. It was actually a cotton linen. And so every single piece has a lining except the waistband, the back waistband, because I knew it would be doubled over and have elastic inside and I didn't want it to be really, really, really bulky. So I did not do it for that, but for everything else, it is underlined. Um, that's what I call it. I'm not sure if that's exactly the technical term because I didn't create another pair of shorts and like, it's not like an actual lining. It's physically attached and you still see all the seams, but this is the color if you can see it as I raise up my shorts. <laughs> I'm so appropriate. Anyways, um, so yeah, that's what it looks like. It's so comfortable. It's not bulky. I made sure that the fabric was thin enough to be comfortable. Um, and yeah, I just love how they turn out. I really wanted some good white shorts and perfect pockets for my phone or you know, whatever my kids want me to hold when we're walking around. So, um, anyways, that is what I've been up to. And, um, I just realized that it, they weren't all blouses. Obviously, there's a pair of shorts, but I forgot about them because I was wearing them and they weren't on my table. <laughs> so, at least you got one pair of shorts. It wasn't all blouses, okay? Anyways, um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you guys have any ideas for types of patterns you want me to show you or like if you want me to go through pants or whatever I've made it all I've made swimsuits you know I'm about to make a backpack you know all sorts of things so I've made a lot um through you know the vast amount of time I've been sewing which is not that long anyway I would love to hear your comments and suggestions please hit the subscribe button down below and the notification bell if you want to be notified when I have another video hit the like button if you like this video and that's it I hope you guys have an awesome day go wear all the blouses because it's super cool okay